Chris is on holidays, did you say? Yeah. Yeah. All right, great. Fine. So, um, all right. So the the today's meeting, I guess, is, what I'd like to do is start out with the um, the data that you guys at Warwick kindly sent over on the testing of the compounds that were recently shipped by Yiwei, which included a bunch of other things there too, which were derivatives of some of the atomized and competition compounds and things like that. Um, because Adrian, you've just done a bunch of measurements on those and um, sent that through. Would you be happy to present that, Adrian? Um, certainly. I mean, um, I'll I'll present it with the names that were given to me because I don't know the origin of absolutely everything, and mm -hmm. maybe you can follow up with actually what that detail that might be useful as well. Yeah, no, she's done. She's posted that. So after you've done your. Um, your presentation. I was going to bring up the structures. Okay. All right. Um, so, I don't know. Bear with me. Right, can we all see that? It's coming. Yep. Okay. All right. <clears throat> so um, we received compounds that were, as I understand it, an extension principally of the atomized compounds that uh, uh, Anita originally screened. And these compounds largely were development of one, well, or more of the leads that um, she extracted from her screening. Um, and she found that a number of the, these things multi-targeted. And what I was sent was, as I understand it, the logical extension of the leads that you would want to chase off. Um, so we had 45 compounds in total. And the very first thing I did, going from the experience I had with the enemy library, was to screen all of the compounds, not against the actual target enzymes initially, but the actual coupling systems that were used to detect their activity. Uh, because the enemy library initially gave us a lot of very false positives, which required us to reconfigure the assays that we use. So um, with the low volume fluorescent assay that we have available- Can go into full screen mode, it'd be helpful. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, just make it uh, Okay. Oh, yeah, great. Right. So uh, with all the compounds that we, we basically obtained, we screened the coupling system for inhibition of the coupling system. And of the 45 compounds, um, the compounds starred on there gave an inhibition of greater than 50%, which would mean that if they were in the uh, assay of MER-D or MER-E would potentially register as hits. So those compounds, which are put in that right-hand box, OSA 001170 down to OSA 001140, um, those are going to be sc screened in a separate assay with less uh, sensitivity to coupling enzyme inhibition. Um, and that's to do. So with the remaining compounds, um, we essentially screen them against Murdy uh, from Pseudomonas. And this is the total data. So the pink um, the pink bars are inhibition by our positive control, which is 0.4 millimolar ADPCP. Uh, the green bars are those hits uh, against Murdy, but also against the coupling system, which we can discount for the minute. And the uh, blue data are the inhibition of the enzyme by the uh, uh, compounds we've been sent. And if I triage out the coupling enzyme active molecules, green stuff, this leaves us with um, essentially 11 compounds which give greater than 50% inhibition against MERD. 
And by my untrained eye. So Adrian, I'm sorry, just I didn't quite catch the actual concentration of the test compound. And these compounds, what the concentration were they being tested at? I didn't see that. Sorry, it's, it's obscured. The title is obscured by the um, by, by, the, by the screen. It's 0.5 millimolar. How much? 0.5 millimolar. Okay, 500 micromolar. Okay, thank you. Okay. So uh, the net result was um, that you can I can see to my rather untrained eye. Um, repeating motifs coming out in the compounds, um, which kind of suggests that there may be a series of some description emerging uh, with respect to MER-D. So we then went on to screen MER-E. The only reason this box is here is that I gather someone might actually need this for their thesis. So these are the actual details that we use. Anyway, with, a, with the uh, screening against Murray, having eliminated all the compounds that we would worry would target the coupling system, uh, we came out with um, another uh, 11 compounds, most of which actually were also significantly inhibitory against MERD. So all the compounds that inhibited both Murray and MERD to a greater than 50% are highlighted in the box on the right hand side in that maroon color and the ones that are uncolored as in black uh, appear to singly take out Murray. One thing that we did know was that OSA 001133 is essentially an analog of an enamine hit from plate AO1, MO2 um, and although we've not done any IC50 data yet it would appear that it is slightly less inhibitory with the additional phenyl ring uh, than the original head. And finally, um, this, this table uh, basically directly compares the inhibition data we have for MER E uh, and MER D, um, where we're looking for those compounds which have at least 50% inhibitory potency against one or both enzymes. Um, and that's the data that we sent you. And at the moment, quite literally, we're trialing the C with this compound set. We should have data by, I hope, the end of tomorrow to be sent towards the end of the week. And that's where we are. All right, great. Thank you. Um, if you, just focusing on that last slide there, if you were able to unshare, I could try to, um, uh, I could try to do something useful, which would be to, um, maybe I've just lost the tab, sorry. Um, I will try and share the, the compounds that we um, had here. So I've just got to get on the right screen because the, the Zoom is misbehaving. Okay. Um, so, uh, yeah, UA uh, made the graphic earlier and I think has posted it, but I can share it. So um, it's four separate pictures. So this isn't going to be amazing because I'm going to have to do it four separate times. But where's the share thing? Sorry. Okay. So um, the... These are the relevant compounds um, <clears throat> where, uh, yeah, as you said, Adrian, the, these compounds in green with the green text and in the green boxes are the ones that show greater than 50% inhibition against both D and E. Um, and they are coming from, as you said, two of the original atomized hits. So things either made or purchased. And this compound four that came from the competition um, where our contributor Finlay had suggested this for, and then we we did a little bit of SAR by catalog around that. Um, and it comes up um, again here, again, another atomized compound, and that compound again here. Um, and then that's kind of it. There are there are a couple of here that hit one rather than the other, and then this last one down here, another compound made by Yiwei that um, so seems to hit both. Um, and then below that, so you can see it on the um, 
on the GitHub issue. There, there are the kind of the others, which, um, which th there are structural similarities, right? So you know there are some eWay compounds that don't tend to work quite as well. There's another set around one of the other atomized compounds made by Eve, and so on. And so there is a real breadth of activity across these compounds, even though there are some similar motifs. Um, so it's not, yeah, it's, it's it's what you'd expect. It's not as if all of these compounds are hitting. They're, they're certainly not. You know, we get a real range. Um, yeah, these are some of the SAR by catalog around the atomized compounds. And then I think the last one has a bunch of uh, inactives, essentially. So, um, yeah, there were a couple of um, final compounds made for the competition which didn't do terribly well. Um, and then an, another another bits of the... So yeah, we have little SARs around each one. And I guess we're going to have to do a, a separate graphic that clusters by original compound and the compounds that we bought and, and made and, and what we found for each one and which one might be the most promising looking. Um, I, I guess I should add, actually, that... We really also do the IC fifties as well with these. For sure, yeah, yeah. Well, that was going to be my question, right? If, if you've got the, for the green compounds, basically, yeah. Um, because at the moment you just have single point data. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So yeah, or single. But data. I mean, on on first glance, there 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 it's a range of activities. So I guess with some of these compounds, they so some of Yiwei's compounds, for example, the solubility was always pretty bad. So yeah. um, I was worried that we might just be getting aggregation yeah. and interference with the assay or what have you. Um, but it doesn't look like that's the case because... I think no, I mean, the quality of the raw data is lovely, actually. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Yeah, I have some hopes for crystallography. Yeah, yes. <laughs> exactly. Right. Yeah, so the, the, those are my two questions. So one is, yeah, if you are happy to get the IC50 data for, for the best compounds, the green ones, so the, the ones that are hitting both. Um, you say you're also doing... Mercy uh, in the same kind of assay, and then yeah, yeah the, the possibility of crystallography for the best looking compounds. Yeah, definitely. I will include it for crystallography as well. Uh, I'm getting the crystallography incubator hopefully on Friday, if nothing changes. <laughs> so yeah, I hope for the next meeting I'll have something interesting to show <laughs> on okay. that end. And and sorry for for that because obviously we're talking here about multi-targeting compounds. So um, for the crystallography, what was the what were you hoping to do? Which against which enzyme? Mm, so here I got protein for E. coli. I was gonna start first with E. coli because it's the one that I'm doing. I don't want to step over the SSCCID work, but I also have pseudomonas constructs as well that I could try at right. the same time. Right. All right. Wonderful. Um. Mm -hmm. And I, I mean, because these are new compounds, there's not going to be any overlap with what uh, Bart and the University of Kansas guys are doing, right? Because those are, that was JO6, no. I think, right? No, at the moment, no. But we could also send them some of the some of these good compounds as well. Mm -hmm. if, you know, yeah, that would be interesting. Um, but my e like is that should grow really relatively fast. So I thought I would give that a try and see how it goes. Right. For both soaking and core crystals. Okay. All right. All right. Wonderful. So yeah, that's um that's really promising. So thank you very much for doing that. Um yep, Yui, Yui has submitted her thesis and done her presentation and is, is I think currently on her way back to you or in China, so is not able to join us today. But yeah. When when I when I hear what she's God is so great, I'll let you know. <laughs> but very nice for her to have uh, you know, data on the compounds. So uh, it's very, very useful. She got she got a little bit of data just, just in time. Nice. Yeah. Um, all right. Is there anything else you wanted to add to that, Adrian? I think we covered everything. So IC fifties and the Mercy data. So I just had a question back, Adrian. So the in the assay conditions, I wasn't one one of the ones, I can't remember which one, there was ATP present. There's ATP present for both. So what concentration? Um, so now the ATP concentration does vary between the two sets of assays because what I'm doing is keeping the ratio of the ATP concentration of the KM for ATP constant. 
So what I'm trying to do is balance, if you like, the sensitivity of an ATP-directed inhibitor uh, by putting in a, a concentration of ATP that is equally competitive if I can put it like that. Um, because there, there is there are differences, slight differences in the KMs for ATP for the various male ligases. Right. So right. for example, yeah. So for example, the, with the reason, the reason I'm okay, I'm sorry. The reason I was okay. asking I think these compounds in theory were not binding at the ATP site. Right? These are all based kind of off of the original uh X chem compounds, as I recall. Yeah, so it was a broad area of the protein um, that was given to atomize um, to predict compounds against. We um, don't know for sure where they're binding, right? Because no, we've no, well, no. I mean, Laura has crystal structures of those compounds, right? We I we don't think these this... compounds. No, pardon. I well, don't think it's these compounds. No, no, no. No, but the point. Go ahead, Laura. So we didn't get for for these ones the crystals that we got that were in the um, um allosteric sites or crystallization contacts. Right. So, so my understanding again, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm a little unclear here. Then, so my understanding was the originally when we sent the information to Adam Wise that the structures we sent them were kind of the of the x chem kits not you know yeah we, but they were the, the anesthetic side thing i'm sorry we had we we had a new pocket forming uh for the compounds those are the ones i don't quite understand i'm sorry i didn't quite understand what you're saying laura so again i just think these were not they adam wise did not Adam Weiss did not, as far as I recall, did not screen in the ATP site. They were screening at the like XCHEM sites, the other sites, not the ATP site. We, we, I thought we, you know, we went through this whole thing. The question was, you know, where are these compounds binding? We did the overlays, and yeah, well, when and, they and, were... and the Adam Weiss compounds were kind of adjacent to the ATP site, not in the ATP site, as I recall. Anyway, just the point being is that. These yeah. compounds are probably not, and that was back to why, you know, what's the ATP concentration? So these compounds, you know, have to, if they were binding at ATP site, you've got basically KM amount of ATP found, right, or in the assay. Um, you, well, these compounds are probably in the, you know, several hundreds of micromolar, uh, based, you know, most likely, based on the inhibition at 500 micromolar. So I'm just saying these, I think these are probably, bind, you know, these, there's nothing wrong with that. I'm just saying, you know, uh, they're 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 binding and, and they're inhibitory. I think the key thing here is that they're actually inhibitory, right? I mean, you're running uh, Adrian's assay as a somewhat, I would say, it's a functional assay, then, right? Yeah, I mean, what what it means for me then is that basically, when I do the IC fifties, I probably have to do it at variable substrate concentrations of ATP and the other two substrates uh, to determine what's competing with what. In right. other words, I would actually have to determine the mode of inhibition. Correct, correct. But I'm just saying it's unlikely, I, I guess my point being is that it's unlikely these are ATP, directly ATP competitive compounds. They may be allosteric functionally, but they're not, I don't think they're ATP competitive, which is fine, I, just, I mean, that's a good thing. And they seem to be multi-targeting, so that's all good. Um, yeah, I suppose in a way it's a bit of a relief they are multi-targeting then if they, if they are directed away from the actual active site and therefore those residues which are concerned. It was yeah, definitely the case that they were designed against not not necessarily the ATP site. However, when Atomwise saw the crystal structures that we'd gotten, um and that um, there was this conformational change that had happened. Uh, they were uh, surprised in the sense that, you know, they they hadn't predicted that um, yeah. change of conformation when the when the molecules bound. Um, so I don't think we ever had a really good answer as to whether or not these compounds 
were bind, were binding in the ATP site. They they certainly weren't designed to be there. Okay. But the, I think I think atomwise were were clear about the idea that you know sometimes it's uh, that there's just luck involved. That's yeah. what that's serendipity. What all serendipity. <laughs> yeah. When 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 they saw the the X-ray structures, they, they that's what they said. Um, we'll flexible yeah. Thank you. All right, thanks. Thanks. That's all I have on that. All right, great. Um, before I go full store on the C, then you're happy that I do the assays in the same way that I've done for DNA. Is that, sure? that would make right. the most sense to me, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Great. Um all right, thanks. I mean, in in this case, for the for the competition, um, it would be nice to try and publish a little paper on that so that we acknowledge the contributions that came in. Um, generation of IC fifties for those Finley McLean compounds would would get us most of the way there for a little communication there, just to some preliminary data, assuming the IC fifty is you know reasonable. Um, a structure, of course, would be amazing, but I see 50 you know, to to do a, a, an entirely de novo computational prediction of actives and run a competition and get something with about what was it, ten or twelve compounds, is uh, is pretty good. Um, little cloud of SAR for a by catalog and then an IC50 would be something nice, particularly if it's multi-targeting. So that would be a way of of kind of finishing that little bit off. Um, even if the compounds don't aren't the ones we ultimately pursue, it's still nice to try and get something out from that separate study. Um, and then, yeah, IC fifty crystallography. I think it's everything. So that's wonderful. Thanks, thanks for thanks for doing that, sending the data, and then talking us through it. Um, the other thing, uh, so Yu Hang is busy with um, trying to finish off his uh, efflux proof variations of the uh, AZ compounds. Um, he's about to uh, make some uh, guanidinium, pyridinium type derivatives of, of the existing compounds. Um, again, once he's once he's got those, made those compounds and got the data um, of the activity against the enzyme, so the enzymology data, then that's a complete piece of work too. Um, for that, he still just needs that IC50 of his amine compound, so the one where the AZ compound has been transformed from an alcohol to an amine, still just needs that crucial bit of data if that is in the pipeline at Warwick. Yeah. Uh, may, may I just add a little bit uh, to this point, please? Uh, so because like my, my previous amine compound were a bit hard to preserve, like uh, if you, if, we, if I, especially it's like a super small scale, like 10 milligrams each time for the small scale reaction. Then like, it's really hard to make a HCl salt because, uh, oh, sorry, TFA salt, because if it's got co too concentrated, come my ring off. Uh, if I make like HCl salt is in dioxane, then the, the amount uh, of compounds were not quite enough to like uh, get a, uh, to get a precipitate so that we can filter out. So it's kind of like a, a bit technical problem for uh, my previous compound. So I've been thinking like, uh, can we just uh, be aware of like when you guys are like, for example, you, uh, obviously you guys are really busy with doing biological stuff. So like uh, 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 we uh, can we like book a slot, like uh, we, we get a sense that oh you're you're finishing soon then we ship uh then we quickly make our compounds and ship them like as soon as you guys finish so that like we can uh test those compounds freshly instead of like letting it waste uh wait in the fridge and getting the wrong data potentially yeah we can yeah um so do you want to resend the ones that we have already or new compounds uh later on I, I guess you guys are in the middle of doing uh atom wise and some other like testings right so uh i would like to uh, remake some uh the aiming derivatives together uh, and once i finish the guanidinium and peridiniums like i just ship them together all together to you guys then like uh, then we we can test them uh mm -hmm. as soon as possible yeah, when, yeah. 
I guess the worry the is the, the sorry the background worry is that with some of these compounds which are just primary amines which are not made as salts they they can easily get oxidized and and go off essentially and so with with some of these they're, they're because of that risk it's nice if we can make them and yeah. ship them and get them evaluated in it in a, in a short turnaround time so that the amount of time out of the fridge and so on is minimized mm -hmm. um yeah. so that we can be sure of the data so yeah i guess you saying you know if there's a slot that's coming up then he would prefer i think to remake the amine right and yeah. and send it and so it coincides with with an available testing slot in in warwick if possible so that mm -hmm. we we don't have any doubts about the amine having gone off yeah yeah so we currently we just paid them a, in the box form like as soon as you guys allow uh, let us know okay we are about to finish in a week or so so that we, we just quickly deprotect and pre, uh, uh, make them so well, that's the... i'll tell you what if i just look at what they've got and look at the diary and give you a date mm -hmm. yeah um, and then we devote that week to that that particular function mm -hmm. Should we do that? Yeah, that would be great, I think. Right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that would be great it. if that's possible. Yeah. All right. Wonderful. Um, and you hang um sorry, sorry, Joe, we we are on the verge of sending you a um well the CC4 car proposal that we wrote, that you hang mostly wrote. Um, I think he sent that to you. And you hang, did you were you hoping to get some feedback from Joe on that proposal before we 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 generate a new version? Uh, no, yeah, I think I ship it a bit late, like uh, by the end of August. Before that, so the CC4 uh, car proposal, the car. The, the uh, car. Yeah, that, that that's the version. Like uh, Joe gave me a lot of feedback, and then you gave okay, me fine. a lot of feedback. Yeah, so, so that, that's right. the third version, I think. All yeah. right. So so I've received that. I've looked at it. Uh, there's a number of things. I, I think Johan, what I, I need we need to do is a separate mm -hmm. uh, call to discuss because I think there's some things it's easier maybe to talk about. Um, I've been I've been away. I was actually on vacation for like ten days. So anyway, mm -hmm. I um let me let me uh send me send me I'll send you a couple of times so that I can meet with you this week. Awesome. And, and we can talk, we can talk through it. That'd be great, right. yeah. Because I mean, yeah. there's ultimately, if we're happy with the proposal, there's no reason not to submit it, right? I don't think we're waiting for anything. So um, that would be great, yeah. All right, that'd be that would yeah. be good to talk about. Okay. Um, and then the uh, last thing, Laurie, if you're still um, on the call, there there was some interest from um, NEU from from Bob Hansen on some student yeah. projects. If that's still yeah. live, then i guess we should meet separately about that and talk about about what that might mean because some of these you know recent um hits that we've just been talking about mm -hmm. might be really good for student projects yeah i completely agree um i think that would be better than what he had initially been kind of thinking about doing um we are yeah. still trying to work out internally whether there is funding there to support it so okay. it's a little bit of a tbd um right. having said that I took students on assuming it would go ahead. So I'm currently scrambling for projects. Uh, so if there is something that you want made, um, I'm happy to put a student onto it. All right, cool. We just had an interesting experience over the summer with um, with the Mycetoma project where um, about 20 or so students doing master's projects at, at, at UCL um, made compounds for that. So different compounds, but with the same approach. Mm -hmm. um, and uh this was in part because we had so many students we had to accommodate them in in, in uh, we we couldn't accommodate everyone in research labs so we so we used the teaching labs and uh, yep. put people together on a kind of group project where everyone was making a different thing um and it worked really well so they they made compounds and they're being evaluated right now um yep. and, and and some of the student feedback has been that they uh they've they actually enjoyed being part of a team that was working on something right rather than yep. being on their own in a research lab so it it you know contrary to it being just a crowdsourcing project it, they actually found it was quite fun you know oh no it. completely completely i mean dnd &D &D, i had a lot of success running similar sorts of programs yeah, as well too right sure. yeah yeah for sure all right great all right we'll, we'll connect separately about that but it's, it's yes good, uh, possibility yep for sure <clears throat> all right um a bunch of other stuff that was on the um agenda but uh, and i need to triage this because a bunch of stuff is, is there that, that no longer needs to be um have I forgotten anything that anyone really wants to talk about or something that we need to be doing?
I'll probably be talking about the UP4A stuff um, maybe next time around. Right, the, Matt, it's the set, you haven't talked much about that before, right? But we, we saw some preliminary data a few months ago. Yeah, that's right. Right, okay, and you've gathered more. I mean, yes, it would be wonderful if you wanted yeah. to talk about that. But yeah, maybe next month. Yeah. Hopefully with some crystals. Yeah, <laughs> but yeah right. Yeah, that would be really good. Um, okay, and then the, uh, sorry, yeah, there was the one more general thing, of course, um, Laura, was this issue with the SPR. Um and and the chips taking a while. I guess there's no update there, right? Would you're still waiting on on that? Well, I did manage to find some chips from someone that I was not going to use, so I can you know replace whenever I got some. So I've got some, um, but obviously you know we need to be smart about when to use that or how many compass to test to make sure you know, we yeah. can get the maximum amount of it. Because yeah. I don't know when the next compass are, and then the chips are going to be uh, around. They still have issues with the. Um, uh, production of chips so yeah they told me they're hiring new people so that probably will be better will, will be better soon um yeah okay all right fine yeah, okay the, the I, ones that they I, have more stock is the c and five sensors but we don't use them we can't use them okay <laughs> the product dies okay <laughs> All right. I think from my perspective, that was everything. So um, unless anyone's got something else, we can uh, push everything else till next month. All right. Thanks all. Thanks very much, Adi, for presenting that and for doing the work. Thanks. Thanks, everyone. All right. Bye-bye. Bye. Thanks, everyone. Bye. Bye.